not supposed to say fuck at the start of the show. I fucked that up. So that was bad for YouTube or something. I don't know. I saw a YouTube guy say that on Adam 22's show. I think I've heard the same. Those guys know. Mm-hmm. And he was like, notice how I didn't cuss at the start of the show? And I was like, oh. You d- d- uh. I think I, I think we're fucked. We're just not. Yeah, it's just not fault. cut out for uh, mainstream. Yeah, that's what it is. Not cut out for mainstream. Mm. Mainstream YouTube. There it is. Steve Fury's here, everybody. We have a guest. What's up? Happy to be here. That introduction was ten out of ten. Thank you. I Thank don't you. know why he didn't like it at all. He, he does he had different like PTSD. With he it. does every time I sing. He does something different. Oh, okay. That one was yeah. I felt that that was a tad disrespectful. It seemed a- like seemed like he didn't like my singing this time. But I'm I was used to it. look. I was going through a tough time. That's what happened at the time. I thought it was pretty good, actually. Yeah. Well, some may argue, but I, I like it. Do you know uh, Blasco from Ozzy and Scott Ian? They made that song. Really? Yep. Well, yeah, that's pretty fucking awesome. A friend of mine, Will Pendavis, his kid made the riff, and then those guys played over it. So it's awesome it's, way it's to start pretty, It's an all star rock and roll jam. It yeah. Is. Um, yeah, so I accidentally, I didn't accident. Well, I kind of, I, I didn't know what day it was. I've been busy, man. Getting up early and stuff and doing stuff and talking about contracts. And I'm not very good with business. Like, I, mean, I don't say I'm bad. I just don't enjoy it. And I know that you've got to be really in it to make it work for, to benefit you. You know, if you're just like, ah, hey, yeah, whatever, uh, sounds good. Then you get a shit deal. So I have to like, you know, push back and I really hate it. I think I'd rather be like uh, on the Conan the Barbarian wheel, you know, where you you just have to walk around with that log and go in a circle. I think I'd rather do that than business. As much as I would, it would suit me to be good at business. I've never been jealous of people who are good at business because they really like business. Because right. being into business is one of the lamest things to be into. Yeah, Rob Deerdick makes it kind of exciting. Not, I'm not saying I want to yeah. join him. I'm just saying he makes it seem like, oh my god, he looks like he's really enjoying business. Yeah. So the problem is with business is I'd rather be poor than try to be good at business. Like, it's too much work. Yeah. I'd rather just kind of get screwed, but then get screwed for long enough where I made enough money that I don't have to think about things because I don't enjoy trying hard. Me too. I don't I don't even know how to start a spreadsheet. I feel like you're ahead of me, Steve, because you've admitted it. Yeah. I'm, I'm in I'm, denial. I'm, I'm like, no, I love business. I fucking hate it. I'm out. I'll live on the... I'm closer to be like, maybe I'll get under a bridge one day. So Do you have like, kids? No, oh, that's why I don't have yeah, anybody. Because I would like to just let it go, yeah. you know? But I, I got to have yeah. two rooms... In my house that isn't mine. Yeah, that's do, big. Do, it's do a lot you, of money. Do you conceive of kids being in your future? Yes, maybe, definitely not. Yeah, they'll happen. I'm just... Uh, you do want them. Yeah, I just never All grew right. up with any like large like money. You know, like we weren't poor, but my parents had like small government jobs in Sacramento. So like, I just don't want... I just want some money or not to raise them at all. I don't want to raise somebody broke and worrying about fucking diapers and shit. I'm like, that's... Yeah, that's real sad. Yeah, that shit sucks. It's just I, hard to have a good day when you're like, yeah. do I have money for diapers? Yeah, and then I'm like, I, now I have to try to achieve this dream that I'm trying to live that is selfish already. It's you, like, I, I'm not doing this. You don't seem like you have, no offense, but a good rapping game. Because if you had that life, it's not a bad idea to rap. Yeah, but then you have to have, have a bunch of baby mamas. And once again, we're getting back into the drama that yeah. I just don't really want. Right? It's heavy lifting. Yeah. Yeah, having babies with a lot of different women sounds like so much stress, right? Sit staggeringly stupid. How does Nick Cannon do it? I mean, fool me once, fine, you know? But the guys who make that mistake over and over I again. mean, if I had a lot of money, yeah, and that kind of like everyone was at my teat, yeah, and it wasn't that bad, that could be kind of fun, you know? Like Nick Cannon. Like Nick Cannon. Right, because he's not if- on the, he's not like. With the babies, every yeah, exactly. Day. He doesn't have to worry. He He's ain't burping shit. Out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but at my level, I'm gonna be have to. I'm gonna go from yeah. one baby mama's house to another yeah. throughout the day until at the end I get like an hour by myself, like a regular man would. If <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sex with Just an elaborate schedule of whose couch you're sleeping yeah, on. Tonight. Yeah, exactly. And I don't want that. I'm out. I'm out. Yeah. So I accidentally took MDMA last night. That's really funny because I was thinking last night that I wanted to do it on purpose. Yeah. 
Yeah. I got some if you want it. Uh, I got some for my 50th birthday. I bought like too many and I don't really have any, like a lot of friends that want to do Molly with me. I don't blame them. <laughs> um, so I, it just, I just have it. And then I've just been carrying it around lately. Yeah. And then I was like, it's right there. Just do it. Thursday tomorrow. You don't have shit to do. Oh. And then I took it. And then when it kicked in, I didn't take much. I'm such a pussy. I took like half of a thing. But I was like, oh, okay, I feel kind of cool. And then for some re- weird reason, it just popped in my head that it was Monday. And I was like, wait, am I getting up? Oh, I getting up in the morning. That fucked everything. But yeah, that really that, wasn't that bad. Molly has some repercussions to it, too. Out of all the drugs, the next day you're pretty fucked up. I remember is that I, is is that really so? Because I I would agree. I mean, as much as I've taken, I think no, no, no. Here's the thing. I think you're probably right, but I haven't taken Molly since I was a kid. Oh yeah, and things are different. Because when yeah. I was a kid, I remember thinking that Molly and mushrooms and even weed were kind of perfect drugs yeah, because the agree. hangover was just like a mellow version yeah. of the night before. Unlike yeah. drinking, which even a hangover when you're like 18 kind of sucks a little. But I could easily see. It, in the ways in which my body has rebelled from like cheese, as I've gotten yeah. older than forty, I could see where the morning after yeah. MDMA for a man is. A different well, it depends story. how much you take. You know, it's like back in the day, um, I'm guessing we're probably all close to the same age. Uh, there used to be more press pills where you'd get something and it'd be like a little Xbox or Pikachu on it or something. I remember shit. those. Hell yeah. There was like a name for certain ones that you yeah. knew that was the one you want to get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like, yeah. let me get the dolphins. And yeah. Right. I was like, oh, I gotta go find the dolphins. He's got pink dolphins. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'll get like four of those because those are fucking hard yeah. to come by. Quad <laughs> sta- there used to be quad sacks, double sacks, triple sacks. Um, yeah. But I now. I back into drugs. You guys know it sounds so Now it's pure fun. Molly. And um, I mean, if you don't take much of it, you're, pre- like, you're probably not that hungover. But no. I, I'll take like. Point seven, which is like seven of those at once uh, probably like three and then a couple hours later two or three me and my friends during the pandemic we would go to joshua tree once every two or three months we'd get all the money that we made off the government we would rent a house and we would uh just lose our fucking minds get like an ounce of uh mushrooms a bunch of tabs of acid and molly and just go look at the stars cool it was pretty awesome but that, that, I'll fun. tell you, you, you're fucked up for about a week after that. You're yeah, well, you're doing. I, this is back when I used to do drugs. That, that's how I did Molly. I would, I wouldn't. If you had one, I'm not getting it. Yeah, yeah. If you have like seven, then we're talking. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah, I'm gonna need at least seven because I know how I go. Yeah, because I want to know. I want to really feel it. Otherwise, what yeah. am I doing here? Yeah, I, I'm a, like. I just want to like feel like I'm young again, but I know that I'm not. Yeah. So I just did a little bit. You know, I would, I, even if it was fucking, you got a week off, Jason. It'd be very hard for me to just take a whole one, you know, because yeah. I, if I'm really rolling, it's, it's a bit irresponsible for me. I can't shake it. Even yeah, if the kids can't. aren't here, I'm just like, oh man, like if you don't really know who you are, is that sensible for you? Yeah. So I, I or your parent or your kid calls you and they're like, how are you doing? You're like, I'm, I'm actually feeling pretty good right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working about a 10 right now. <laughs> Could be. That's funny because okay, I can remember taking phone calls from my parents when I was yeah. on drugs. Yeah, it's different. It's totally different. It's a lot yeah. less sad. Yeah, because everyone has. Yeah, parents. they're sad for you, but you're not sad. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I remember my dad called me one time from Ireland. My parents are my family's Irish American. It was like their lifelong dream to take a trip to Ireland, and they went. And then while they were awake, because the time difference, I was on a bunch of ecstasy, and they called, and I was just like, "Really? And what else did you do? That's yeah. amazing!" And they were like, "God, this is." I can't believe he gives a shit, yeah. and I didn't. But it was the yeah. perfect time to, for it to seem like I did. Did they catch on? You think? No, oh. I actually can remember. It was the most sincere. My dad was living his lifelong dream when he hung up. He's like, "I love you," and I was like, "I love you, Dad," because yeah. he was in Ireland and I was in his kitchen on ecstasy. Nice. Sometimes that's how it works. Yeah. You you're a professional comedian, Steve, but you used to be a drug dealer. Yeah, well, you know, a lot of things, but my main thing for quite a long time was uh, selling weed in Northern California and selling, uh, I used to run over to Mexico and get Norcos a lot. No. Yeah, I used to walk them over the border. Walk them over. Wow. A lot easier to walk them over. You can't bring as much, but it's pretty How much would you walk over with? I mean, I used to do it like, I did it probably six times. I'd walk over like, it went up each time, you know, because at the time I was a kid, I was like, 16 17 years old the first time i did it and then probably stopped when i was 21 but you'd you know I'd more money each time so the big at the end i did like 
couple thousand, which is kind of like the size of like you know you know when you play with cat you know when you play football. There's always that normal size football, but then there's that like that really big ass one. You ever <laughs> play that? You play it's like your hands too big and you can't really throw it. It was about that size, and that was pretty hard to get over. Yeah, where'd you put it? Well. I keister it. No, I just like fucking threw my stomach like a, a snake. No, I flattened it on my on uh, kind of like flattened, like pushed it real hard, yeah. and I put it on the crease of the top of my ass and kind of you know like when a girl's got no tits and no ass, she kind of like yep stands like one of those things from Men in Black. Yeah, did you know girls when you do that? We know you're doing that. Yeah, <laughs> or they got on, scoliosis. You put it on, on the one. on the small of your back. Put it on the small of my back, flattened it out, and put my underwear over it, and put a little piece of tape around, and then when I was walking back over the border. I mean, this is a whole thing was a crazy. This was the last time I ever did it when I had 3,000 pills. I'm walking over the border, <laughs> and I'm like, I got to hide this somehow. So as I'm walking back, there's these guys who do who paint on, like, black lights, yeah. like black like felt. And this guy was painting a side profile of Bob Marley smoking weed into the side profile of a lion. And then the other one was Bob Marley smoking weed into the side profile of a skull. And I go, okay, I'll just grab both of those. I'll put them on both sides of me. And I'll walk eh. across the border, and they'll just be like, "Hey, this guy just came here for some art." Yeah, <laughs> right. So then some I- of the worst art money can buy. <laughs> <laughs> fucking exactly. Bob Marley, fucking lions. <laughs> Holy shit, man! Travel to a different country. <laughs> I to guess get it, yeah. You were young, so it kind of made sense. Yeah, I mean, it actually it ended up working. That was the last time I ever did it, though, because I went to the line, and like oh. it was long that day. Yeah, and I'm a lot taller than like migrant mexicans going into the america you know yeah. so i'm sticking out i'm wearing like a pink polo seven jeans rainbow flip-flops because like the whole vibe was to like look like i was college kid going down there to party right because they used to do that out tijuana used to be safe like when i was a kid growing up you used to be able to take like a bus down there go get wasted come back up and like san diego state had like buses that you can go down there so i'm walking back with both. i remember that yeah yeah i remember i'm walking back with both picture frames on both sides of me about six inches taller than everybody wearing a bright pink polo. And then I see the border guards up there and they're like looking at me and they're talking. And they're looking at me and they're talking. And oh. then the guy goes like this. Oh. And I'm like, I'm like, do I run into Mexico? Yeah. yeah. Do I just sprint to Mexico? Yeah. <laughs> but like just it. disappear and become a ranchero. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I could start, I could work at one of these pharmacias or something. And I go, I don't know. I just go, fuck it. I'm going to walk up there. I walk up there, and the guy goes, what are you doing here? And I was like, oh, I'm just trying to pick up some art from my apartment. And he goes, can I see your ID? And I go, yeah. And he goes, all right, you're good. And he just let me through. And that was the last time I ever did that. Bro. So uh, he actually, do you think he was interested in scrutinizing you a little bit more than everyone else, or was he kind of letting you? I think up? he thought he knew I was an American dude. He was, and he was like, get out of line. Yeah, right. We're not going to, you don't need to wait for three hours until these, everyone else we have to check their papers. They fucked up. I'd like yeah, to know did. more. So you're from Sac Town. Were you still living up there, or had you relocated to the San Diego area? No, no, I was still living up there. I, li- I moved to L.A. At, at like six years ago. Okay, so how did you come to meet people who said you're the perfect man to go to San Diego and put on a pink polo and go get some Bob Marley paintings? And they probably didn't suggest thing. the pink polo, <laughs> but yeah. Well, you know what it was, man. It was just I was selling so much weed at the time. I used to, I was, because you used to be able to go up because when when the cannabis clubs first opened, there was no rules. You could just go in there with a bag of weed and be like, "Will you buy this from me?" So then I would go up to uh, Northern California to Mendocino area. I'd buy like two pounds, bring it down, flip it to the cannabis clubs, chill for a little while. Because I was not like I was like a kingpin, chill with that money for a little while. And then I noticed that Percocet were really fun. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, how do I get these? And then I learned that you can just go to Mexico. They have pharmacies and you can get anything you want. There's like you can just. Yeah, they, you want. they sell them over the counter. They sell them over the counter. Wait, you bought 3,000 pills over the counter? Yeah, I had no. Well, the, oh, okay, so I used to do that. <laughs> Boy, fir- does my back hurt. <laughs> well, the first time I did, you know, first time I went down there, I think I got like 500 pills. Put okay. that in your pocket. How are they when you say, I want 500 pills? Do so they go, oh, okay, sure. I mean, so, they're probably used to it, right? You got to go deeper in. So if you've ever walked across the border, and I haven't done this stuff in whatever the uh, law is. Of decades. Two, yeah, decades. So... Where you walk over the border, it's really easy to get into Mexico. Yeah. It's just one of those, like, you know when you go to the fair and they kind of have those metal 
yeah. swinging thing. I've walked like in there. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really easy. You just walk. You ever done that, Michael? I never have. Uh, it's pretty easy. It's a lot easier than driving. Why do? Because you're not 21. Yeah, you go there to drink, but, but like practically yeah. speaking, you Joel take Hong a car. Kong. There's a parking lot at the very, very bottom of yeah. San Diego, yeah. and then as soon as you walk through, you're in Tijuana, so you could walk like two blocks and hit a bar. Yeah. Okay. Got yeah. Not even two. Yeah. Not even like, two. Yeah. But the problem is in the beginning, it's a little. I mean, as much as Disneyland as Tijuana can be, it's a little more nice and chill. And the more you wander into these cavernous places, eh. the shadier it gets. So the that's first, where the donkey sh- the donkey show is. That's where everything is. So the right. first time I go down there. I just go to a normal pharmacy. Kind of got to chop it up with them. Make I don't know what the rules are, but they kind of after a while they go they'll let you get something. And Can you speak Spanish? No. Yeah. And I'm by myself, and I look. I, Cause my whole thing was always like, don't look like you are doing something bad. It's not a bad. <laughs> game yeah, you know what I mean. Like yeah. I was just like, okay, I'll drive this kind of car. I'll do this kind of thing. I'll be who I am, but I don't want to dress in a giant tall tee with stuff, so I look crazy or I look like someone's. Dealing drugs. That's a good point. Yeah, most weed dealers look they a lot look like, like weed that. dealers. Yeah. And, I, and they That's drive bad. like a su- blue Subaru. And I'm like, I'm not going to fucking be that guy. So then I go in there. First time I get the pills, 300 come back. But now when you have to get a lot more, you got to go deeper in there. And then you got to, man, this was the scariest shit I ever had in my life. I was walking in there and they kind of like, there's dudes that will just like call out to you. Kind of like barkers. But they're for strip clubs. Yeah. So this dude, he's got a L.A. across his face like this. Yeah, and he's he's like he's barking at me. He goes, you know, we've got ladies, ladies. And I'm going, nah, nah, I don't need that. I'm walking by. There's like someone painted a donkey like a zebra, and he keeps following me. He's like, ladies, ladies. He's like, cocaine. I'm like, I don't know. he's like, pills. And I was like, and he goes, follow me. And I follow this guy. <laughs> yeah, bro, I follow him down this an alley in Tijuana, and I was at the time I had a knot of three grand in my pocket. Yeah. So I'm walking and and I'm passing like these weird little, they look like businesses, but all they're watching are like dog races and like horse races. So I'm like, okay, this is getting real shady. It's not there you want to be. And he goes, okay, we just got to go up there. And it's like a, it's like the opposite of dust till dawn, where like the stairs went down into darkness. This shit went up into darkness. So I'm like, I'm like, okay, I'm like, okay, this sucks, you know. This, this might but be it's weird. also see I've been in a million not quite this yeah. bad a situation but as stupid as it is to go it's not as easy to just turn around yeah and like this away guy's either. terrifying if yeah. he was him one other guy yeah I'm him not... turning around and leaving might cause yeah. them to do exactly something. yeah he's yeah. like oh now this guy knows if it is a real place now yeah, he knows yeah, what yeah, real yeah, place yeah. is yeah. now he knows all this kind of yeah, stuff yeah you're in I'm in Yeah. so I'm like okay I walk up there and I walk into the most disgusting strip club i've ever seen in my life okay there's it's 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 barn themed so like the ground is covered by no um not hay no even worse you ever been to texas roadhouse the nuts you can say peanuts yeah yeah, there's peanut shells shells. yeah there's peanut shells (laughs) i'm shit sifting through peanut cells shells Every woman has C-section scars. Yeah. There's, I swear to God. Is this like a kid-friendly strip club? Because that's usually where you like, get the peanut shell. Yeah, it was oh, a bad no. knot's very There's fun. a daycare in the back. It's, <laughs> and the woman, she's dancing in a pen. Like a, like a pig wooden, pen. Like a pig pen. Yeah. And she's dancing in there. And there's was it three, hot? It was hot as fuck in there. Yeah. yeah there's no, 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 was it sexy? No. Right. No, 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 She no. wasn't hot? It, w- it had too strong of sex trafficking vibes. Uh, you know what I mean? Oh, all the girls in there look like they were strung out and, and yeah. sad. Strung out or from like deep South America where like they probably got promised the wrong shit. Uh, and then there's like the only three people are watching are three white dudes in wheelchairs. So I don't know if there was like a... They knew each other, obviously. Yeah, right? yeah you're right. You was, never just bump into another <laughs> two guys in wheelchairs. Yeah. Just so happens to be the only three people yeah, in yeah. the club. It's only at one at a party. You know these, right? guys, they, these, these guys are, know that club. They got in a bus and they yep. fucking went to that place. Those guys served a nom together. Mm-hmm. And this is their annual reunion. So I get in there and I'm like, Bring okay. the donkey. I'm like, at least it's somewhat public. I mean, you know, it's like Mexico. Who knows what really public? Those is. three guys in the wheelchair could definitely help you out. <laughs> <laughs> they'll hopefully they'll tell my family uh, that, that I was, you were killed in a, yeah. in a CD fucking strip club. <laughs> trying to buy Percocets. Yeah. So the guy goes, "Okay, sit down right there," and it's a little couch, and I sit down, and then he has two big ass Mexican dudes sitting next to me. Like it's like the couch is probably maybe fifty percent bigger than this one, so I'm like this. Then the guy comes over with a six-pack of mini Coronas. I remember this to this day. 
He gives me six pack of mini Coronas. He gives you six. That's six pack. Okay. For the little ones, right? The Coronitas. Yeah, the Coronitas. Puts yeah. them at my feet. There's like a pool table here that they put a top on, and they put this uh, working woman on there dancing. Haggard. Haggard. <laughs> like, not even dancing, just kind of like legs spread, like fingering yourself, like three feet away from me. Yeah. Which, yeah, but it's like. That's a fucking top notch strip club. Yeah, right yeah. it's like, it's gnarly. So then he goes, Give me the money. Uh, no drugs yet. No drugs yet. He goes, Give me the money and I'll come back. Uh that's a bad one. Yeah, and I'm like... You didn't have the balls to be like, drugs first. <laughs> yeah, no, I got no power here. Right. That's, that's when you rip it in half. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I gave you the little Cornitos. Uh, you give me the money now. Yeah. I'm like, all right, dog. I go, okay. I give him the money. And he leaves. And I'm sitting there with two big-ass Mexican dudes looking at this woman's fucking... She had C-section scar. Look like a fucking... A cat attacked her. Uh, and then she's just finger her pussy. And I'm talking, this is like 15, 20 minutes past by. I've smashed all the cornitos. Uh, and she's still fingering she's herself? She's still fingering herself. So she's doing pretty good, you know? Uh, like, she's definitely getting her hourly rate. But she also, they took all my money. So I'm, I can't, like, do nothing to help this woman out. Uh, I'm just getting this weird free show that I didn't ask for. 45 minutes later. The lady was gone, I think, at this time. I got nothing to drink. I'm thirsty. My feet are covered in peanuts. The guy comes back in with a trash bag filled with pills. It's about the size of a big-ass football. He just tans it to me, and I get to leave. And I'm like, fuck. Awesome. You know, I didn't I didn't die. Yeah. And then I flatten him out. Then I go buy those two paintings, and I walk across. And that was the last time I did it. Because it used to be fun, man. Like, T1 was fun for a while. You're saying when you used to go there and purchase pills, the whole thing was enjoyable. Yes. So explain a pleasant uh, drug deal in Mexico. Like a more Mexican Willy Wonka's factory. It would be like you'd go to a strip club, or you'd go to it. You'd go less to a, nuts. You'd go. Yeah, less. There's a lot less nuts. Lots less scars. A lot less creepy alleys. Like you just go to a pharmacy. Ah, uh, okay. Farm. There's a dude in there. It's a doctor. Yeah. You say what you want. There's like some like pill heads outside. They you just walk in there, but the, it looks like a pretty normal pharmacy. I've been to those. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. just buy whatever you want. You know, I'd be like, give me these, give me a couple of Viagra's too, and Xanax bars. And I grab those, and you buy them. Go into, I'll take like one of them in a Xanax bar, and I'd go watch strippers, and then I'd eat, have like two buckets of beer, and I walk across the border and go home. Yeah, that was fun. Okay, but then the last time, bro, all the good, like the t- t- the cartel shit started to happen, so like the vibe was different. I was uh. the only fucking white guy in Tijuana, and I know that sounds funny. Or weird, but I'm telling you, the streets were empty. Everyone was looking at me. I'm walking by myself, and that's when that guy barked at me. Come down here and get it. And that was the last time I started. I did that stuff. Because I'd heard that when I was a kid, that was always like, uh, a like a go to reference for the worst possible place. If you were in a shitty neighborhood, this is yeah. like Tijuana. I heard that it got nice now. No, it's probably worse. I mean, I haven't been. I went a little while. I've literally ago. never once been. I've never really been all that tempted because they used to say such shitty things about it when I was a kid in like the eighties. Hmm. I mean, depends what your like shitty thing is. Like, if you're a shitty person, it could be a pretty fun time. Yeah. Hey. You know, like I think right now the biggest thing is just like people go down there for prostitution. My buddy went down there to go to the Hong Kong club, which is like this very famous prostitution place. But that's not my vibe. Hmm. You know, I don't really enjoy uh, that stuff. So I was like, yeah, I'll go down there. I'll go to the pharmacy. I'll see if I can get, you know, get one Percocet and sit there while someone check the titties, give them money and drink beer while you go and fuck prostitutes. I'm like, that sounds like a fun time. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, pharmacies don't do that anymore. I went there like the week that happened. That was my honeymoon. And I was like, I'm such like a... Like a good Catholic boy, I felt nervous yeah. even going in. But even my wife, she was pregnant. She didn't do anything, yeah. but she was just like, "Go, it's legal. Who yeah. cares?" And but it turns out it was. And I asked the guy, and he said, "Fine." And then the fucking lady yeah. goes, "No, we don't do that anymore," and yeah. told him to not give it to me. Yeah, they changed it all. So then when I went down there, I was just like sober in a strip club, and it was a lot more depressing than it was. Get a Cuban cigar. Wait, so when you go to the drugstores now that you cannot buy good stuff, yeah. Yeah, you still got like a Viagra, low-level Lazapram, stuff like that. I think that's what I saw last time I was there. Yeah. Lazaprams. Lazapram, like kind of like a xanax kind of thing. Well, I could get into that. Because yeah. la- last night I um, was wrapping up Thanksgiving and I had the whole family in town. I used to get one can of Ready Whip and then whatever wasn't 
used I would take a whip mm, it off yeah, of. This year I got three. And my daughter cleaned out one of them actually, like, authentically using whipped cream. But last night for the second night in a row, I put everybody to bed and just had, like, one second of silence in my kitchen. And I just, like, killed the entire ready whip, whip it. Nice. Yeah. And it's great. And I was sitting there thinking I should probably just do some ecstasy. Right. That's all I'm doing. This is this is so good. And the only bummer is it's going to be done in 15 seconds. Yeah, it just does not So last. while you were doing ecstasy, I was like, I'm... First, there's like, a, I'm a kid, so I do drugs. And then there's like, I'm a grown up, so I shouldn't do drugs anymore. And then I think you break on through to where you're like, I'm a grown up. Yeah. I can do whatever the yep. fuck I want. Yeah. That's the whole, that's the payoff of this. Yeah, you won't wake up in the morning and decide not to work anymore and get no. more drugs. No, I, I will you're going to go to work. I will pick the perfect night yep. to take ecstasy yep. in the comfort of my home. Fucking jacuzzi broke last night. New house. I don't know how to make things work. And when I went to go get in it on the mully mm. it was cold oh so now i was out there trying to fix it in the cold and i was like this is fucked <laughs> this fucks everything your eyes are just like going back and forth it wasn't that much. bad i didn't i didn't take <laughs> if i took enough i'd probably be really trash today i don't i don't feel that bad i i just it's accumul accumulative wow i'm accumulating uh shitty sleeps and late nights and early mornings and i'm 51 yeah doesn't you don't get one like i slept the night before for like nine hours and i was like i feel a little bit better that's a start yeah and then i did what i did so now we're back <laughs> <laughs> just gotta harden the fuck up that's, that's i think it's just like suck a butt i had vegemite this morning so i feel pretty good vegemite kind of fixes everything if you're is it good for you? you if you guys probably don't know because it's nasty to americans but vegemite in the morning is like a really good hangover uh, meal. It's just uh, it, now. What is it? I've tried it. It's I don't not, really know. Yeah, yeah. It's just my, my, my mom told me it had beer in it. I was like, that makes sense. Oh, yeast, I think. Right? It's yeast. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's it's it like is. fermented yeast or something. That's. I, I, but I, I seen, told you everything I know. I've seen YouTube videos of Americans. They fucking take too much of it. You know, it's <clears> it's, <throat> it's very light when you put it on your toast. Like if you take a spoonful and put it in your mouth, you're. I don't know who does that. That's yeah. ridiculous. It's like, have you ever tried it? I remember being very tart and tangy, right? Yeah, it's like jelly mixed with cigarettes. Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> it doesn't have cigarettes in it. You fucking, it's tasty, man. You just got to do it like, you know what? You just got to be born with it. That's the end of it. Because yeah. if you want to, I know people that, if you grew up being a soy sauce guy. Right. Like, I got some Vietnamese friends and shit that they're like, yeah, Vegemite, not so bad. But Americans, you didn't, you know, you're not very soy saucy. So you can't, because that's as close as you can get here. I would say that it's like a soy sauce paste. Almost. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's also circling around it. It's pretty bad. You're making, I'm making it sound really bad. <laughs> right. But like my dad. I mean, not worse than cigarettes. I don't my, know. My, yeah, yeah, my, yeah, my dad ate liver and drank scotch when I was a kid. And now I eat liver and most Americans wouldn't touch liver. My yeah. son eats beef tongue. What do you mean liver? Like you remember, slices of it? I'll eat just about any animal's liver just about any way. Unkimo is monkfish liver. A monkfish. What the fuck is a monkfish? It's one of the more hideous Ugly looking fish. fish. And yeah. probably, other than say the like the anus, the thing that you would like, if we were sitting here like taking turns picking pieces of it to eat, yeah. liver would probably be just last, about the yeah. last thing to go. Is it little? No, they actually. It's kind of a blob that they cut and slice. That big's a fucking fish. Ugh. There's a. Is your wife Asian? Yes. How'd you guess? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if one of that's racist that said that. But, hey, I called it, and uh, no one's eating monkfish or liver in, <laughs> right? in the United It is a weird States. thing to know about. Is it up in Japanese? Iowa. Japanese? Yeah. Yeah. Was, yeah Japanese sure. people will eat some fucked up shit. <laughs> Yeah, no, I know. There's nothing wrong with it. I like Japanese yeah. food. I like Japanese food. There's, there's, there's a definite double dare element yeah, to their entire national stuff. cuisine. They go pretty hard in the fish department. Yeah. Like eyes and shit. Yeah. They're like, well, we cut it really thin. I'm like, well, what is it? It's thin. Yeah. I'm like, all right, I guess I'll try it. Yeah. I've had raw horse there. You name it. Raw horse. Raw horse. It's a why, they, why not cook it? <sighs> Uh, do you know you what? Mean like sashimi? Yeah, that horse? I think that's exactly right. Uh, okay. Yep. What's that like? What's horse like? Really tender beef. Hmm. Well, it feels like there's no fat in it. 
So it wouldn't get tender. Yeah, but more. I mean, I don't want to get get into like the cuts of meat. There's there's like flank steak and stuff is kind of a tougher cut of of beef. It's all right. It just wasn't something I'd go out of my way to eat a second time. It wasn't yeah. it wasn't right, was it good. wasn't bad? Would you try a dog? Would I eat a dog? Nah, no. Not what a about little if piece? he's a really bad dog? Nah, I don't want to eat a dog. I eat a person before I eat a dog. Would I eat a person? I think I could. Don't they say they take like pork? Uh, did you? Did I cut some of me off and feed it to you, Katie? Uh, yeah, I've eaten some uh, uh, leg skin. Yeah. It was. How much leg skin did you cut off? I got a uh, uh, fucking. It's kind of gone now, but a couple of years ago, I got a scarification. I don't know if you can see it on my shin because I'm so fucking hairy now. But I got a uh, Red Dragon logo, like this chain. I got that scratched into my shin. And my friend no, is good friends with this guy that does it. And I was like, you should do it on your show. And I was like, yeah, okay. And didn't really think about it. And I was like, I got a lot of tattoos. How bad could it be? But it's fucking gross. They fucking just cut a, a layer off. So when I had the layer off, I was like, that's meat. You could eat me. So Katie's, did it? Katie's a tweaker. So she ate me. <laughs> <laughs> just had to give her teeth. And she was but like, it was oh, gross. It was not painful. It was. It made me feel nauseous. I'm picturing that's when you put. Because you know, it's you know, like you know, more. You know, I mean, he's like. And it doesn't hurt like a motherfucker. It, like it doesn't. I think tattoos off? hurt more. So it doesn't. Really? It doesn't feel good. Yeah. But it's more that you know what's happening is the bad bit. Because I was like, yeah, go ahead, start. And he starts, and I'm like, oh, that's not that painful. And then I realized looking at it was not a good idea. And I was like, why do I feel like I should look away? Yeah. I feel a bit sick. I picture like in the old El Paso or Taco Bell commercials when they have the cheese grater going over the block of cheese, mm -hmm. the little bits coming yeah. through the grater. That's he was getting my... it off in pieces, Michael. Like he did the outline of the yeah. Red Dragon logo, and then he fucking like – peeled the whole bit out uh. and then it didn't stay it did stay it's just it's been years but wait it just looks like you got acl surgery yeah I'll have... <laughs> i think he also got that yeah i don't know yeah, it's really gone i think i see it i mean i probably which one is it on yeah <laughs> yeah i you can see the line down it's just because i'm fucking hairy now I would just be pissed, though, if someone took a chunk off me and then it wasn't, like, extremely visible. I'm like, I want people to see that from a mile away. Oh. You could, but yeah. then, it, you know, the body, it heals. It's a magical, we're magical organisms. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I got, a, my thing. I got some shit taken off for, like, biopsies, and yeah, it scars. But, yeah, the, the body, unfortunately, if, you, if you're looking to have huge, empty spaces in your flesh... How do the black guys get that? Is that the that, keloids? Is that the, oh the burn? Is that a, that's a burn? Yeah, you got to watch how those. I got friends. Uh, there was a skateboard, not gang, but group of people in a certain state, and they were all branding themselves with the fork, so they'd have the three prong burn brand thing. And one of my friends, Sergio Ventura, when he got it, it fucking blew up and just became a. a a, 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 a rectangle of welted skin. I was like, Did it stay that way? Yeah. Yeah, that's it, keloids. Okay. That's what it is. So, like, a lot, you'll see sometimes, like... Didn't look like a fork. Like yeah, black, it never yeah, like, looks that good. I've never seen one where I'm like, I got to give me one of them. Yeah, sometimes you'll see black dudes that play yeah, football. football. Like, I guess they'll get them for their team or their I think it's fraternity. Their, uh, fraternity. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then, so black people are really prone to that. And also a lot of Asian people. Like, my wife can get keloids. Uh, and and yeah, that's so the same thing friend, with surgery. Asian. Yeah, yeah. Right. What does a keloid do? It just puff, puffs up? It's, it's like just like a gnarly that. level of scarring. Ugh. Jesus Whoa. Christ. What the Some people, but Jason, there's a lot of dudes who do that to themselves intentionally. Yeah. Like, it, look, I, I, res I really respect every generation's, not just their right, but their obligation to do, to do stuff that older people go, that is fucking stupid. Mm -hmm. So... I understand I what I that. sound like when I say that, but I, every time I see a guy with that, I'm like, that is fucking stupid. Well done. Yeah, I mean, it's like, Nailed it's, it. it's more just like, wow, that's impressive that you were able to go with, through that pain. Because I feel like a brand would hurt in a level I agree. that yeah. I could not even imagine. Jason, I, I've told the story a million times of I got mugged twice in one day just trying to buy weed in <laughs> Chicago. 
Uh, you should not try and sell drugs in Mexico. No, I don't think I would be cut out for that. Have you had instances where you had sketchy circumstances with dealers? You must yeah, fuck have. You. Like what? Uh, well, when I used to live in Hollywood a long time ago with my stripper girlfriend, and she did a bunch of coke after work and was like, i got to get some weed. And I'm like, I can't let you go down that street by yourself at fucking three in the morning. So I went down there with her. And she started talking to this guy, and I was like, don't talk to that guy. And I go over there, and the guy's like, you know, uh, give me, uh, what was it? I think maybe it was only 10 bucks or something. Give me 10 bucks, and I, and I got some hash. And I was like, yeah, cool. And then he gave me a, a little block of uh, compressed bird seeds. And when he put it in my hand, I was like, that is compressed bird seeds. <laughs> and I was like, this is compressed bird seeds or something. And he goes... Give me $10. And I was like, but it's not weed. And then he pulled a knife out and put it to my neck and said, give me $10 or I'll cut your fucking head off. And I gave him $10. So yeah, that's, a, easy, that's a so, under the circumstances, that's a solid deal for Bird right? Seed. That's what I thought. But also, yeah. you know, $10 in like the 90s would be almost 400 grand now. So <laughs> <laughs> he so got he a pair in mind, yeah. He took a lot of money. Out easy of come, easy go. Yeah. Back Houses then. in that neighborhood were yeah, going for $25. Yeah, so. no, that was my rent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For the year, ten dollars. So, uh, Hollywood used to be hella fucked up, right? Cause it's pretty. Yeah. Have you been there recently? Is it not hella there. fucked up? There was signs saying "Don't go down here" or, or or sell drugs. Like there was like a sign that the government put up to yeah. say this is where people sell drugs. Yeah, because every. I mean, now it's pretty bad, but it's really just like the homeless people on the street. But mm-hmm. like the gang members, there's not. You don't really see people hanging out on street corners. He's right. Like that mm-hmm. it's just like. Homeless people in tents. And Which can be scary at yeah. night time. Yeah. But it's like, not like gang members. And they're more like scary. That. Yeah, they're more scary. They're not crazy. I could beat up a homeless. I think I could How take a homeless. How many homeless do you think you could beat up? Do they have weapons? I think I could take one with a knife pretty easy. I, I always imagine homeless without weapons. Okay, then I think four. In, I always in perpetuity, but not at the same time. Yeah, but they never do that, right? They not, always, they're not. They give not, you a shot. They're not yeah. henchmen in a Bruce Lee movie. Yeah. <laughs> yes, they are. Yeah. I'm fighting him in a narrow corridor. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, I see. One after another. Yeah, Hopefully, you can another. punch one into one, and yeah, there's exactly. two down. Uh-huh. You step over you him. Throw a little bit of crack on the ground. Little speed. They I, go for that. I always picture because okay. uh, you do have to. You you kind of like run simulations in your head I'm like out there walking my dog and I'm like well nothing's gonna happen with this guy but if it did what would it probably be like and what would I do I always imagine that they would be far quicker to bite mm. than uh, people yeah. with houses I feel like their teeth hurt <laughs> I think so too you, know, you got a lot of and if they if they latch on Dingo good. bites people when he fights that's, that's right he does uh, I got a friend a, a real big guy was gonna beat him up so he bit him and I was like usually I would not be happy about that but yeah. if it's a real big guy where you're gonna lose yeah, i'd say so. beat, biting him is totally acceptable especially if it's a street fight it was you yeah, yeah you don't know what you're gonna you don't know what's gonna happen in the street fight if you're fighting someone you know even in a bar it's okay if you're fighting a guy on the street if if when you pass out or get knocked out there's no saying that that guy's gonna stop beating the right. shit out of you because if you look at youtube a lot of people don't stop no you just get the, a couple of head the kicks bonus kicks when you're yeah. unconscious is, that's how you kill people have you gotten in street fights? Yeah, I've gotten a lot of street. I think I'm nine and six. I think truthfully, I could be twelve and three, but the three of them were kind of, you know, ties. Right. Like we're like I won, and yeah. then he won, and then I won. Right. I remember the last one we we're playing basketball. It was one in Sacramento. We're playing this. It, there's a lot. It, there's a lot of trees in Sacramento. It's called the City of Trees. It's a bunch of trees, a bunch of parks. So we're playing basketball. And I'm just enjoying the day. And the guy goes down. He scores me. He's like, bitch. And I'm like, that was weird. I'll just kind of let that one go. And he calls me a bitch again. And he calls me a bitch for a third time. I go, hey, man, you call me a bitch again. I'm going to fucking punch you in your fucking mouth. Yeah. And he goes, okay. Goes down the court. I mean, and he's also toasting me. You know what I mean? He's like, oh, he's man. like crushing me. So, like, my ego's getting low. And then the guy's like, he does it again. Bam, bitch. And then I punch him in the face. And nice. then we str- struggle. We get. He gets on top of me. Almost like a full mount. He's kind of getting me. I'm kind of my hands up, kind of tapping me out, punching me. Call the fight. Get up. We play again. No way. We still play again. Yeah, yeah. Because I had my friends there too. Then he does it again. Then I tackle him. I pick him up and I slam him on his head. Nice. And then I got on top of him and I'm punching the shit out of him. Like this is full mount. I'm like dink, dink. And I'm hearing screaming. 
I'm just like, ding, ding. I'm here screaming. And then I realize that I'm playing at a children's park. And there's an elementary school there. And there's like, not even elementary school, whatever's before kindergarten. All there's like 30, maybe five year olds screaming as I'm beating the shit out of this dude. Ah, uh, no. Nah. So I count that one as a 10 or a uh, tie because he kind of beat me the first time. I don't mm. think it's very safe. Yeah, but if you won the last beat, I reckon yeah. you won. I think, All right, I'll yeah. Take that. All right, if yeah. you win the championship it's rounds. 10 5 right there. Those it's are the right ones there. that count. That's it's a playoff w. record. Yeah, I've been in a lot of fights. Yeah. Oh, but I was just a lot, you know, I was never a great You didn't seem like a violent person. I used to be a lot different. What happened? Be... What made you change? Was it comedy? Yeah, I think I just started caring more about comedy than selling drugs and like fighting people and doing like your little neighborhood with other people's neighborhood kind of thing. It was just Is like... it because you realized that you actually have the potential? To... Yeah. Right. I'm like, I'm pretty good at this. Right. I don't want to die and I don't want to. Those are pretty good arguments. Yeah. Because I pretty much, I, I was, I was never like really great at skateboarding, but you know, I can like kick flip, do like a, do like a board slide or something on a yeah. small thing. And then I got pretty good at football and I was like, I don't want to fuck up football with skateboarding. Then I got better at selling drugs. Than I was at football and then I got better. At, <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to jeopardize my, my drug, drug dealing career. Thing. And then I got better at comedy. And then I was like, okay, I'm not going to do this anymore because it's. I mean, what am I? I'm selling pills. And plus, I got older, and none of my friends were, like, doing it. And then it was just like, this isn't even... And then, and then pills started getting fake, and I'm like, I'm not trying to hurt anybody, you know? Eh. Like, like, no like, one I, like fentanyl kind of stuff? Yeah, yeah. Oh, shit. Because you can start... Te- you can really... If you get a fake pill, there's a lot of ways to test them. A lot of them, you can put them in water if they start dissolving really quick. Normal pills have a coating on the outside that goes in your stomach and it won't dissolve. So then everything I was getting started to dissolve, and I was just like... You know, and no one, I, was, I wasn't dealing like heroin. I was doing like seven milligram Norcos or 10 Percocets. And it just got a little darker. And then I was like, I'm just going to get out of this because it's not yeah. fun anymore. Yeah, because you don't seem, I mean, it sounds like you had a really tough childhood uh, if you're going to be selling drugs at, yeah, it was you know, okay. at 13. Good. But, you know, you seem like a kind hearted person. Yeah, I'm just a so lot. So it was in now. there the whole time. Yeah. But, I mean, I'm still like, I'll switch on somebody. You know, like, they're still in there. But now more, it's just, like, it's so much easier to be nice. And, like, you know, I mean, you, you probably were there. I don't know. I'm just guessing, like, when you'd go to a party and you'd be like, you know, am I going to try and fight somebody here? Just, like, weird young yeah, yeah. stuff. You know, yeah. rolling. You go to somebody else's party with three of your friends. You're just waiting for someone to do something. Yeah. And then you go beat up these kids from another neighborhood. And then, just, <laughs> shit. It's weird because you don't seem... Yeah, like yeah. that at all. You know? a, a part of me, don't take offense, is waiting for you to go. No, I'm just kidding. I've never been in a fight, man. Yeah, no, life. I definitely, and I like look like like a dad now and everything. But it's just, I don't know. It's just a different vibe. I was a lot meaner. I was still pretty funny though. <laughs> Did you in in dealing once you get into pills and stuff like that? I'm always picturing it from my perspective when I was a drug consumer, which is we're just kids who are trying to get fucked up this weekend. Essentially, yeah. But like my dad owned a bar, and he always said, "You don't." Is this dark thing for my, especially if you know my dad? He's like, I always say it's like a mixture between the Happy Days dad and a Keebler elf, but just somehow, some way, he ended up owning a bar. He said, You don't keep the lights on at a bar with the guy who comes in and has a beer. Yeah. You keep the lights on with alcoholics. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So when you're talking about getting into Norcos and shit like that, how much of it is kids and how much of it is fuck? I don't feel great about selling this guy 20 more of these. Yeah. Well, it was with the Norco <laughs> stuff, man, like. I honestly think if you're going to, in my experiences, if you're going to be an addict, I think it's a gene in you. And I think mm-hmm. that it's just something, you, some people are just more susceptible to <laughs> fucking drugs. And yep. when they hit them and they just get it. Because I've done everything for, a, I mean, you know, I don't do anything really. I haven't done any, any hard drugs in like four months. But I, wow. I've, I've done them all. <laughs> I've done them all. To and us all. I've done them like. This Sober October or something? <laughs> <laughs> it was. It was right before, it was a month before Sober October. And then I was just been cool since then. But, um. <laughs> Wait, so, because I know you went on the road with Burt Kreischer. Yeah, well, he does nothing. He does no drugs. He just drinks. Right, but he did Sober October, so he wasn't drinking, right? Yeah, so then I was like... Uh, it looked like he was doing a lot of workout yeah, shit. Yeah, it was a lot of work. Which meant out. you had to? Yeah, which I have not... I live my life like ve- like veal, you know what I mean? Try not to touch the ground. <laughs> Try not to move very much. Keep the meat real tender. Sure, it's not a bad. Uh, yeah. It's not a bad idea. Yeah, I I like, like I do the opposite. And yeah. I'm fucking like sore, dude. But you look way better than me, and you're <laughs> damn near twenty years older than I am, which just oh, blew no. me away. I was like, damn, I got some fucking face tats. <laughs> this dude looks just fucking good. It does cover up some shit. Yeah, yeah. like it, it's like it makes you like 
It's like Travis Barker, you know. It makes you like eternal. Yeah. It's a, it's essentially giving you what the black guy does, where they shave their head. Yeah. And you're like, that guy looks the same yeah. for twenty years. Yeah, yeah. It's like what you got. And I was like, ah, oh, I might have to start doing that. Yeah. So I was like, also thinking about like if I was gonna get. You might want to do a couple of Norcos if you're going to do it. I know. It fucking I hurts. I know. That head tattoo was... Uh, was I, that regret- the most, was I that regretted the it a few times when it started. I was like, what the fuck have I done? Because it just hurts so bad. On the sides, not so bad. But on the top, and that's where it started, first line went down my head. I was like, oh. You ever use the gel? I think I want to be a pussy and get that gel. Oh, okay. Now I do? But this was the last old school tattooist I ever was seeing. Oh, so you and he was very heavy handed and he would never do that stuff. Right. So it was more of a badge of honor, which is cool when you're young. Yeah. You can get looked like hooked into that where you're yeah. like, yeah, man, fucking okay. I did 16 hours and it fucking hurt like a bitch. Like, yeah. that's what's up. And if someone got numbing cream, I'd be like, you fucking pussy. Yeah, you shouldn't even have it. Get, do it, get it. Yeah. Do all the spray. Why the fuck mm-hmm. do I need to be in excruciating pain? Yeah. Like, it's going to hurt no matter what spray you put on there, but if you can make it a little easier, make yeah. it a little easier. I spray the shit out of it now. Yeah, I would too. I've been thinking about getting a leg sleeve. I'm just getting to the age where I... I How old are you? 33. Eh, it's weird to jump in now. I know. Well, I mean, I got like one here. I one saw your, you I got, got that like shitty little fucking, cross. That's a yeah. fucking drug dealer's tattoo. That's my dad had that. He was in like a and little... he copied him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I uh, respect. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. And that was my friend who passed away. Then I got this really shitty one on my arm. It's like a San Francisco Giants one because my name's Steve Fury in the SF. I got it when I was like 17. I wow. Guess. That was a cool thing. That is a steaming pile of <laughs> shit. I didn't even have to see it to know that. To fuck yeah, it. I got that. But those a- are, I, Katie and I love those tattoos. Yeah. Like if you have dog shit tattoos yeah. and you don't cover them, because that's Katie and I, if we don't, we don't get laser, we yeah. just, we're like, yeah, that's, that's, that was a time in my life where. Mm-hmm. I was like, yeah, fuck yeah, I'll get a fucking stupid thing on my leg Dude, and, and look at it and from time to time and go, what the fuck was I thinking? That's the lucky one. I put it on the back, so I can't really see. It only right. affects other people. Yeah. And the only problem is it kind of like, if you look at a Giants logo, if you just see the bottom, it looks a little like a swastika. Oh, no. And so people are, there's like a lot of hard angles. Oof. And so people are like, what's that on your arm? And I'll be like, oh no, it's just a terrible tattoo. Yeah, that changed everything. Yeah, it it gets a little weird. The bottom looks a little, a little too many angles. Uh oh, but yeah, you're I doing get... wonderful things with cover ups these days. I'm, I mean, I'm down. I'm, I was. I, there's this chick that uh, in Vegas that likes all my stuff, and she does old school stuff, American mm-hmm. traditional, and I'm like. I kind of want to. I was thinking maybe I'll just get one every time I go to Vegas. Can't go wrong with traditional. Yeah, it never goes out of style. It's yeah. always cool looking. It's not like. You know. Yeah, getting tattoos of what's hot right now, I believe, is a mistake. Yeah, it's never yeah. cool. You get what you want. Yeah, the end. They got that. What's that Russian trash thing that's coming on right? Or polka trash? Katie, polka yeah. trash. Boo. That knows. shit. What is did we talk about? Not gonna age well. <laughs> what is it? I, I believe he's referring to the stuff that's like pretty much just black and white lines, what? like really shitty Jag- drawings. Yeah, really shitty drawings and like yeah. jagged lines. It's almost like they're mixing like. A scary nightmare with tribal tattoos. Yeah. Oh wow. It's really uh, fucking ugly. There's some really ugly um, tattoo trends going on right now. Like ignorant style. I like ignorant. Ignorant style. style yeah. What's that? It looks like a child tattooed on your arm. Yeah. It's a bunch of small. Child oh. Guys. Like Justin Bieber tattoos. Worse. Worse though. Like these oh, are can, like. May we see? Yeah. yeah look it up. To find Very it. big in Japan. Oh. I find, see, I like tattoos a lot. Like it's like what I. Yeah, you know more about them than I do. Yeah. 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 I'm into it. It's the pain, you know what I mean? On veal skin. It's not that bad. Let's see. If, yeah, on veal skin, it's just, you know, my stuff's... Yeah, you know, just like... I'd rather like get that. a tattoo than try to smuggle 3,000 pills into America. Oh, man. So it's shit posting, but yeah. on your body. Yeah, like uh, that. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. really what it is right there. Yeah. And then there's also like the... Um, stick and poke where people are trying to replicate like home done tattoos where yeah. it's just like r- the lines aren't solid you can see all the little dots and it just looks like it was done in jail well, right. people are getting that now like in shops oh okay I know somebody yeah, who's doing weird. some of this stuff like he'll just go and randomly get little ones like like he got like a, a root beer mug on him because his yeah. dog's named root beer yeah. so if you look at him you're like that's a bunch of stupid nonsense yeah. bullshit it does mean something to him yeah. but it's also 
stupid bullshit. It looks nonsense. like a sticker book now. Like the, yeah, the it does. It really looks like yeah, you're like a fucking grown up trapper keeper. Yeah, I feel like the top of the thigh is where you put your real dog shit tattoos you don't care about. Like inner top like because twitch because and you could also tattoo yourself yeah they're right. always the tattoo yourself ones right here because you're yeah. like i could wear bigger underwear no one's yeah. gonna see it. i got this one here pride and my friend uh twitch has gay <laughs> with the other heart so when we put our legs together it's gay pride but he added a fucking doobie in the eye is a doobie but it's yeah. real bad yeah it looks like a bug i yeah. was trying to figure that was the one i kept looking at the most yeah it's it's my gay pride tattoo yeah i like it with I mean, my straight friend so when we go next to each other, we're gay pride. Yeah. I'm not sure he knew I was half a gay when we when he yeah. got it when we got it, but too late now, buddy. You're gay too, Twitch. What's up? He know you like dick. I hope he doesn't have a friend with white on their side. <laughs> gay white. That was unnecessary. No, he, would <laughs> he would be the other guy. The other guy would be the gay guy. Um, he has multiple tattoos right here that he's done, and he also gave the uh, machine to his children and just let them go on there. So he has dog shit just all over the top of both legs. I kinda, but, that, but I like it. I like the idea of when they have a drawing, then you get that drawing on you somehow. But yeah, I don't want my, them. My daughter did a drawing when she was like eight, and then my friend tattooed yeah, that's it. That's awesome. There, and then Katie did that with a stick and poke. Ooh, that's nice. Yeah, yeah there, but there, there, there's a big difference between your kid makes a drawing you like and you get it tattooed and letting your letting kid it, draw exactly. a tattoo on you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like the same of like your kid put a drawing and you put it on your wall and then you, your kid just draw over your fucking walls. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, that's but, but, the same. But, but arguably worse. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. don't wash it off. You just keep walking mm-hmm. around with it. Yeah. So this is the Japanese tribal uh, trend? This is a shop in LA, Duck Castle, and it kind of blows my mind and it makes me feel a little old because... Some yeah, of, that's it. Yeah. Some of these pieces coming out, oh, I'm just okay. like, that looks so huge, bad, yeah. but... That shit is right there. Yeah. yeah. Oh my goodness. There's like a different kind of big in Russia. It's like scratcher yeah. work. Yeah. You know? And it's always like some skinny, fine ass girl with only one yeah. big ass. Which makes it makes shit. it hard for the tattoo to suck. If you're yeah. really hot and you have a shit tattoo, it looks good. Yeah. And they're always on like these skinny Russian like yeah. models. You're like, I guess that does look good. Or are you just a ten from Russia and you got. I got a like friend it. that has weird tattoos. They have like a. They look like smoke. Some of them look like little lines, but they go from like wrist up to the arm. And that's a stick and poke artist that did that. Yeah, it's. I I don't like it that much, but I but they are so original looking. Yeah, that I do like it, and they also don't have any of the other regular tattoos. It's just Just that that vibe. So I kind of, I think they actually look really hot. Are they hot though? Yeah, that, yeah, 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 yeah. That one works. Yeah, it's like the 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 bull ring in the yeah. nose. Yeah, looks yeah, fucking yeah. great. If you're on, the size of a bull, not quite. as Looks great on an amazingly hot chick. Not a lot of bull size humans have the bull. They 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 know it's a little too yeah. close. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get all animal paraphernalia kind of off our bodies. <laughs> Keep horns away from me. Right. Yeah. yeah don't glory horns on you. <laughs> Don't wear like anything that looks like real fur. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't wear a bell around your neck. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like a 400 pound lady with a bell. <laughs> ding, ding. Just dinging, a da- dinging around the ready. club. Man, she better be at the peanut strip club or she's fucked. Yeah. Yeah. But birth scars are not this, the birth scar thing. My mom, when, when I was real young, she said, look what you did to me. I was doing something annoying. And she pulled her uh, shirt up and said, look what you did to me. And I didn't know what stress, stress. I didn't know what it was. It looked like scars. Like it looked like a shark attack. Though. So <laughs> like I, was in, I was in shock. Was it stretch marks or was it a C-section? It was stretch marks. Mm-hmm. Oh, you came out. Oh. Yeah, I was 11 pounds. Was that my mom, I wrecked my baby. mom's box. Yeah. Hard. But it bounced back, I assume, anyway. <laughs> so I've been told. <laughs> <laughs> I know. You know what? I was told by her fucking husband once when yeah. they first started dating, and I was an alcoholic. And this is like back in the day where people were trying to stop me because I, you know, I was going pretty hard. And my mother was a recovering alcoholic, and her new boyfriend that they met at AA. 
So he was a sober guy, and he was also like a therapist. That's always a problem, though, right? Isn't the number one rule you're not supposed to meet people at AA? I don't know. Oh, I thought you were I thought, AA guy. I did go, but I don't go anymore. Oh. But I think it's a good idea. I mean, if you find somebody and they are recovering, I don't think that's a bad match. I think it's worse to find somebody who loves to drink and you have to be no. sober. Yeah. I think that's a worse match because it's going to be around you. Yeah. And yeah, some yeah. people find it hard. It depends on who you are. Some people find it difficult to be around it. Some people are like, it's done, so mm-hmm. it doesn't bother me. When I first got sober this time, I I, I, I didn't like being around it. Yeah. You know, I didn't say anything because I didn't want to be the party pooper, but I would get kind of sad about it because I'm like, oh, everyone's... Having fun, yeah. Yeah, and I'm... How do you feel about going to haunt it? comedy clubs now? Then it's like cha- everything's changed to me when it when it when it comes to drinking. It's very sometimes when everybody's drinking and it would be a really good time to have a couple of beers right now. Yeah. I go fuck, but then I think about you know I'm I'm better off. You know what I mean I'm a better person. I get more shit done, and I really need to do, to do a lot of shit. My time is running, and I and I'm like you're going to be ready to go in the morning. Yeah. And usually like, that's why I had to stop. Cause I can't even responsible Jason drinking ends up drinking enough where I won't say it the next day, but I fucked up. Yeah. You know, like I fucking shouldn't be feeling like this. I got shit to do as I talk about it by recovering from Molly last night. Yeah, I get it. I, I was remember- different. I don't, you know, I would black out. I would, you know, not know what I did. And I never like punched people or anything, but, I definitely did suffer. I go, oh, you're too old to do that. You know, like you can't say that to people. So I would just say <laughs> stupid shit. Steve, are you still blackout drunk? No, I was. See, I'm not really blackout drunk ever. So I got this trick, which the audience is very free to use. So this is Steve Fury three lime trick. Okay, so I drink a tequila soda with three limes, and I use the same cup the whole time. So by the end of the night, when that cup is full of dead limes. I know I should not drink anymore. And with more limes that are in there, the more less alcohol that's going in. So by the end, I'm only getting like a half a cup of thing. Eh. So then I really only top out at like four to five drinks. And for me, like that's, I'm going to be at a perfect thing at four to five drinks. Yeah. It's really yeah, good. That sounds like it worked. Too. Yeah, it works great. Yeah. Especially when I'm at a comedy club. Because if I just keep getting new cups and just smashing full bottles, I'll get, I'll get, I'll never get blackout, but I'll get like pretty drunk. Like I've been pretty drunk on stage recently. Does that help or does that not help? Drinking on stage? Yeah. I would love to be, if I could go on stage on two shots and a beer, that's my perfect one. Cause okay. That, Cause when I did the sober October, you know, with Bert, like I'm doing stadiums. You know? That's, that was one of my questions, dude. Cause I've, I've done shows with you in little yeah, places clothing shops. and then i see your instagram and i'm like dude you're in a fucking football stadium yeah like we've done what's that like the last tour i did with them we did the paint can and ppg in pittsburgh which is where the bruins play and then we went to indianapolis to do where the indiana pacers play packed right packed yeah so it's like twelve thousand people fuck it's pretty fucking cool but I tell you what, it's nice to have a beer before, after, and after, especially at, like where I enjoy drinking. Yeah. So like going up there stone sober, bit more nervous, right? Yeah, and you know I can I can sometimes because I'm getting to do cooler and cooler things, where you can kind of have an imposter syndrome, you know? No, because like, I think I know what you're gonna tell me, and this is a question I was going to ask you. Like, how does one survive? Like, you know, see Fury, fucking hilarious, 13,000 people. And now we're back at the fucking Shake Shack and we're doing it in front of 25 people. I like, I like, anytime doing, I mean, when you, do, it's a different whole vibe, you know, because one is like, if I, I truly love every scene about stand up. So it's like, even if you're a fighter, if you really love fighting, you like training too. Yeah. You like yeah, being okay. in the gym too. The, 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 a lot of times, the I mean, oh, would only guess, I'm a big fan of UFC. I hear a lot of guys talk. A lot of times, the actual game, is a little more ner- or the actual fight. It's a little more nerve wracking. Oh fuck yeah! Than just rolling in the gym, way more. learning how to get better, way more. Exactly. So like when you, when I do twelve thousand people, one I'm opening for one of the biggest acts in the world, someone I've always looked up to, literally my idol. So I do not want to fuck this up. Right. I don't want to go up there and blank. You know that's a fear. You can just mind fart. I don't want to blank. I don't want to mess it up. 
But when I'm doing in somewhere, you know, I'm doing OR at the comedy store, or we're doing like a sh- Aviator Nation one in the back of a Aviator. Uh, that was fucking cool. Show. I got this, some sweet sweatpants for my yeah, for my comedy. It felt good. It, yeah, it's good. Yeah. It's not bad. Yeah. It's fun. I love money, but yeah, just like. <laughs> Nice pair of sweatpants for my fucking ten minute jokes. I felt pretty powerful. Yeah, I mean, once you you're like sweats. I get sweats, and then you put them on. You're like, well, these are pretty fucking. Nice. <laughs> and then you do that. You do like a place like that, and then you learn a new move. Yeah, you, do, you learn something, okay. and then you're like, this is, that's what it is. I know I'm back because you know when you do that, when you do a stadium, I'm not up there riffing. I'm not up there bringing right. new shit. I'm giving you the best jokes i've ever written right. for the last 12 years of my life got it do you i've heard people say a big enough venue the actual timing is all off because it actually takes a minute for the joke to get to them and the laugh to get back to you so i mean it's like um yeah yeah a little bit but like you just don't go fast don't go don't go really fast just yeah. slow yeah. down because it's pretty broad it's pretty broad and you're like hearing yourself from like three different parts of the thing. So just let people hear. But if you're just like rambling, blah, 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 it doesn't really work. It's more about timing, but you don't have to like say something in a wait for a while. It's just, oh, excuse me. That liquid death. Liquid death, I know. Um, but Should yeah, I got you a flat one. It's just um, just waiting for everyone to hear it and keep going. But you can more, the weirdest one is you can milk a laugh. Because it, it, the reason, comedy clubs have to be dark so that people feel safe that they can laugh. And yeah. when everyone's around, when there's lights, people don't feel safe to laugh yeah. whenever they want. Yeah. And also, if you're if you ever been a group of friends, everyone's laughing, you're just laughing. Yeah. So the, when you do that in a stadium, it's pitch black, and there's like twelve thousand people laughing. So you could milk a joke like ten seconds, fifteen seconds. You tell it, and then you just wait. Not everyone, but if you know you fucking just smash that bitch. Yeah. It can go, and then that's a feeling that's like. The closest I could ever think of, like when like a when a music person goes up there and they like sing their song and then they yeah. stop and the audience sings yeah. it and you're just like I could only imagine yeah. what that fucking would feel yeah. like. That's the best feeling in comedy, would right? Be, uh, it's like the highest thing. The highest thing you can, thing you yeah. can get, yeah, is when you people are laughing for ten seconds off something you said. Yeah, yeah. I, I, my kid's Crazy. been getting into like classic rock and like early yeah. metal, and he's getting into ACDC, and we just watched this live performance of For Those About to Rock. Yeah, and it's a slow grind of a song, even with the the cannons and stuff. But at the end, it goes fast. It goes double time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and and now all of a sudden they're rocking, and all of a sudden you see ACDC's view yeah. of twenty thousand people all start bouncing. After the slow grind yeah. of that song, I mean that's the craziest ones is when you see ACDC or Metallica in like fucking Brazil, and it's like one hundred and fifty thousand. It's people. not Brazil. I know the one. It's it's fucking Germany. Pantera, oh, Metallica. Uh, it was a, it was it went like a, a lot of the bands had uh, DVDs or, or VHS. I think because it was that long ago. Of it was Russia. Sorry, Russia. Yeah, and there was there was uh, speakers spread out like giant towers of speakers spread out because the crowd was fucking as far as yeah. the eye could see people yeah so they had speakers that were you know what i mean like fucking half a mile yep. out one that way one over that way because it was just you couldn't everywhere you look over the hill people yeah. like Hundreds the most people i've ever people. seen yeah. ever and it was pantera like what doing today you know what I mean? and it's like Wah! and i'm like these you could tell pantera did the best they've ever done Metallica always come in pretty hot, yeah. but you could like I could tell that maybe you couldn't get as many drugs in Russia, but yeah. Pantera were fucking on. And it that looked like day. everyone was even ru- like, yeah. you're just like, oh my, that looks like a literal. I couldn't even imagine what that would be like. Yeah, that would be hard to come down yeah. from. I am happy. I'm not. I think musician always seems so cool because people want to hear your shit again. Yeah, you know, but also they kind of get paid comparable to what we get paid once we get to those different levels. And I could imagine having to split money with five other people. Oh uh, yeah. Well, there's also <clears throat> just the expense of moving all your shit around. Yeah. Like a hip hop guy, if a hip hop guy can sell out uh, an arena, he's got one guy with him with oh, a turntable. Wow. If yeah. uh, if a uh, if fucking fish sells yeah. out that same arena, fish is kicking ass. Well, fish has got how many guys in the band? How many roadies? How many techs? Too how many. many light guys? The fucking pyro guy. Yeah. I mean, maybe not fish for pyro, but like, yeah, you're talking. You're, you're cool bringing. You're bringing like four, like three buses and a truck with you. 
Yeah, well, and often, fucking Nelly rolls in with a fucking fucking USB somebody, stick. Well, somebody, somebody's there with a box of Band-Aids. Yeah. Gotta pay that guy. <laughs> well, yeah, and also it's like, you know, if when I open for someone, I go, thank you very much, and I bring out the next guy. They're like, thank you very much. We'll be back in about 35 minutes when we get all of our equipment now out and all that kind of stuff, too, because each band has their own equipment. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I didn't think of that. There's things you don't think about if you're not in it. Yeah. It is true. But you're saying that if you are a successful comedian, you make as much money as... I mean, they're just venues. Yeah, you, you sell you the s- tickets. You sell the tickets, you sell the tickets. Fuck. So Bert's doing all right then, hey? Yeah, he's doing real good. I mean, we're... Good we for him. He's him. a fucking sweetheart. He's like the best guy. I mean, like... Like, I didn't... I had... my Both my parents were in our lives. So my life, they were divorced. They had government jobs. I didn't have, like, a horrible... I wasn't, like, eating... But, you know, lived in apartments and stuff like that. But, like... So, like, just getting to experience... The stuff with Bird has just been, you know, my private jets. And it's just crazy. It's just yeah, fucking I've, awesome. I've done that from skateboarding where I, I don't, nobody's paying me enough money to get a jet. But yeah. my friend was. Yeah. And he was like, come on the road with me. And I was like, yeah, of course I'll come on the road with you. And then we get in a private jet and there's, you know, the ladies these asking me what yeah. snacks and shit I want. And I'm like... Okay, I'm, I feel like I should pull out a camera and start yeah. recording because this might be the greatest moment of my entire life. And then, and then it's funny because I get off the plane and I go back to being me, and I don't really think about it. But when I see you guys, I don't know what. Maybe it's a movie I watched a comedy movie. I don't know which one it was. Adam Sandler, where he's a successful comedian and he hires these other guys. What's that show? But just guys that are you know comics. Yeah. And it was right when I was starting to go to clubs and 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 i never i've never been in i've just sort of been standing back on oh okay oh you guys do that that's cool i'm like well that's not that glamorous and then i you know i got friends like burr kreischer where and i go wow yeah you're like uh like you said jets and all this other stuff but you you guys literally even burt goes from jet and then maybe he does a set at like store or something yeah I mean, yeah. But also, you know, like, my level's not glamorous. Like, when I go on the road, it's Which like is, holiday ends. I get paid the minimum at the comedy clubs. How long like until you, you selling tickets, start man. going up? Just, I just don't have you're t- one of the funniest guys I've ever seen, dude. Oh, I appreciate that, man. Like, you're one of the first people too. that I didn't know and started doing stand-up. And I was like, oh, yeah. Because I was thinking at one point, you guys aren't that fucking good. Like, I can catch you. <laughs> and then you got up and I was like, ah. Oh, Okay, good, because I was wondering what the fuck, you know, where's the skill? And I'm like, man, you got the, the soup shit? Oh, yeah, it's the fucking soup genius, was. dude. Thank you, man. Yeah, I'm shit. trying. You know, it's just uh, takes a long time to get into, you, well, so I, I, I study it so much. I, <clears throat> I feel like I'm good at finding patterns and things. Anything I like, I can find uh, a pattern on how things you work. You study yourself or other people? I study myself and other people. I'm study other people more. And, like, I was a door guy at the comedy store for two and a half years. Okay. Which is like a, it's kind of like Harvard for comedians. They hire young comedians who they think. Joey Diaz was a guy who worked there. Jim Carrey, I, Dice Clay, uh, Joey Diaz, or a bunch of other famous people were. Tony Hinchcliffe. Tony Hinchcliffe. A yeah. uh, bunch of guys were door guys there. And so I did that. And then you watch all these guys, the best of the best, oh, not overnight. And, you know, you think you're better than some of them. And some of it can be a fucking nightmare because you're watching people live your dream. But then you. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking rough sometimes, right? right? You're like this motherfucker gets a go. That's it. Up. I would never. Anyway, yeah. So it's that a lot. <laughs> but which I've studied so much, and which actually you're going to be good at is the people that pop the most are the guys that start talking about their lives and telling stories. Oh, because if you look at everyone who's big, Joe, Tom, Bert, Kevin. Joe Coy, Fluffy. They, it's not It's not like... Jesselnick's one of my favorite comedians. Yeah. Mark Norman's one of my favorite comedians. But their joke, that stuff kind of seems, from my studies, to hit a plateau. Oh. You look at Stephen Wright, all the joke guys hit... But the story guys, people just want, just like social media and everything, they just want to be a part of your life. They want to know who you are. They want to do what you're thinking. So when people are doing these stories... And so now I've started getting into a little bit more conversational stories because I used to just be like set a punchline, set a punchline, set a punchline. Yeah. And so I think now hopefully something will happen. Uh, the people are enjoying my stuff. Yeah. 
I, I mean, it sounds like, because I didn't know the bit where you you work at the comedy store, it sounds like if somebody that high level hires you to work the door, then they, they believe in yeah. you. And if anybody... If I wanted anybody to believe in me in comedy, it would yeah. be the comedy store. Yeah. I'd, be, I'd feel pretty proud of myself. They're like, hey, uh, what's your deal? I'd be like, oh my God, really? What's my deal? Yeah. Fucking, I'll tell you what my deal is. This is the coolest shit ever. It's definitely the, uh, you know, especially in this art form. There's not, there's, I think to me, there's only one thing more embarrassing than telling people you want to be a comedian when, when you're like young. And that's like telling people you want to be a DJ. You know, everyone's just yeah. like, everyone's just like, this person's a fucking idiot. Yeah. They don't know what I mean, doing. some I feel like some young people probably think it's cool when somebody says they're going to be a DJ, but if you're a certain age, yeah, that is you should it's, not have. It's like I'm I'm I want to be a professional rollerblader. Yeah, it's, it's like it's, <laughs> why would you tell me? Yeah, that? keep that to yourself yeah. until it pops, yeah. and then bring me in when if, then when it pops, <laughs> just keep it to yourself still. But anyway, um, so that's really hard, you know, for a long time, you know. For ten years, I'm telling people I want to be a comedian. I don't. Ha I have no TV. I mean, I was on TV show. And I have nothing that popped for me. So when, when when you tell people that, it, you know, your parents are like, "What the fuck is this guy doing?" But then when the comedy store was like, "We're choosing this guy to work with him," and then they've treated me very well. My parents were finally, and everyone was like, "Oh, okay." Because then a lot of times, you know, it's just like a lot of the big guys will be like, "Okay, comedy store liked a door guy. I need someone to open for me in Salt Lake City." Are you good? And they'll be like, yeah. And then they'll have that guy opening. So that's kind of like. That's how it starts. Like, yeah. I opened, I mean, I've opened for a lot of people. Bobby Lee, Andrew Santino, Annie Letterman. Um, I used wow. to work with Pablo Francisco for a long time. Uh, uh, yeah. I've, ever, I've worked with a lot of cool people. Wow. Yeah. It's a whole different world there. You guys are in Tim. First time I met you guys and watched you all hang out in the back. I was like, you're, you're not worthy. <laughs> you should leave. I really did. I was like, yeah, you don't, you haven't put enough work. Get the fuck out of here. I can tell you guys are all, you know. Wait, we said that to you or no, you said you that to us? No, you didn't say anything. I assumed that when I. <laughs> oh, I thought you were saying that to me. No. You're like, these people aren't worthy. Oh, I was no, like, no, oh, yeah. what a vibe. Yeah, 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 no, no. <laughs> Dom Herrera came over and put his finger in his yeah. chest and said, you are not worthy. Get the fuck out of here. You, no. know, you know dumb. No, the complete opposite <laughs> is what I thought. I think the vibe there is a lot better than it used to be. When I first came there, it was very abrasive, and people now pre people are pretty nice. You're saying that the comedians at the comedy store were mean to each other? Yeah, and then mean to like other comedians, up and comers. Yeah, mean, mean. I used to watch like surfing. Yeah, exactly like surfing. This is our wake. Get the fuck out of my wake. We're going up first. You don't deserve to be here. Locals only. Yeah. So how many dues do you pay before they go? Yeah, all right. Keep hanging out. You keep that in the mess with you, and then you stay long enough to that. There's another new guy. And then ah, new yes, guy. of course. And then you move up the ladder when the other another right. new guy comes in. Bro, I saw, I saw Tony Hinchcliffe, eviscerate a man, eviscerate him. Tell him, he was like on the mic or no? It's that back hallway. This is when the vibe was a little different because it matters like who's like the bigger guy, who's like the younger bigger guys there. Like, cause like the big, big guys, they don't set the culture because they're like, not there all the time. Okay. You know, like Joe Rogan's not like saying who should do stuff, but like the guys a little below him kind of set the culture cause they're all there all the time. So everyone looks like what guy is the younger guy coming up? Is he nice? Is he mean? And Tony was the guy for a long time, bro. He told this one guy, Michael Nochi, a com another comic. Yeah. Who was an up and comer. For, yeah. One, was opening for one of the biggest guys in the world at the time. Bro, on he, his way to success. Yeah. He eviscerated that guy so bad. Told him he shouldn't be here. You're not funny. No one likes you. All this kind of stuff. And it was like, one of the, he de-dressed him a way I've never seen. And that was kind of the vibe back then. Was it necessary? Like, was the guy an asshole? Yeah. I mean, he's kind of an asshole. But, oh, okay. But also, you know, Tony can be an asshole. And it was just like the vibe back then where... You can get eviscerated here. It's not a nice place. But then, like, those guys got bigger. Tony had his own show. He's huge. He's a big, fan, great comedian. Number Ooh, one uh, live podcast in the world. Number one live podcast in the world. Very funny place. He's helped me out a ton. Very nice guy once you get in with them. Which, a lot of times, the nicest people are the ones who are a little bushy on the front. And nice yeah, because there. if you get successful, a lot of people that approach you are doing it for the wrong reasons. Yeah. And then you start to get well, paranoid or suspicious of everybody that befriends you. I get that. Well, I mean, also, it's like, 
I never like the guy who's always nice to everybody because then it's like quantity over quality. Like, like the it's rock, like not worth anything. Yeah, <laughs> something weird about it. Yeah, right? you're too nice, dude. Yeah, and we got a friend Rob Corddry who works with him, and he's just like, I don't know. I mean, he's always upbeat. He's always yeah. positive. Uh, I don't know about that. Yeah. I'm like, I think I know what you're trying to say. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so now I feel like the people in the the lower end of the guys are all nice, and it's a little bit way better vibe. I feel like that happens with certain. Uh, certain thing like in skateboarding i know that there was there in the 80s the the punk rebellious skateboarder types where tattoos were not cool you got tattoos because you were uh, a piece of shit yeah those guys were always super mean to us and then i think maybe there was i think i might have been the part of, a part of the the last generation of wrecking people to get them better like just being like fuck off like if you don't do yeah. it that high don't even do it yeah, Pierce. Yeah. Like, yeah, like, yeah, I like that. <laughs> right, but I think it, it got to the point where I don't know what happened, but maybe somebody higher up decided to be a bit of a role model, and we were like, "Oh, that's a, yeah, that's a cool look." And then you go, "Ah, oh, I." It's like uh, I remember when I was little, and I wouldn't. They wouldn't let me on the ramp because I couldn't drop in, and they just keep taking rides. And I like, get the fuck out of you, little shit. And I'd be like, uh, uh, "Just want to skate with you mm-hmm. guys." And then remembering that and going, imagine if the good guy was like, hey, come up here, man. I'll show you how to drop in. Mm-hmm. Would have made my fucking day. Yeah. And I, I don't know. I don't, it's not me, but somebody in, in our group started doing that. And then we copied him. Yeah. It's it was like, probably Tony. It's hazing was a, was a thing throughout time. Yeah. In almost every profession. You could have sworn it was everything. good for you. Yeah. It was, everyone's like, you haze him now. Hey, it's going to suck for a year. Next year, you'll get to do it to the other guy, and you can do it way worse than them. And if you just have one guy who breaks the cycle, it's like it's like when you beat your kids. You know, it's like yeah. if you just have one guy who doesn't beat your kids, the rest of the people are going to stop beating their kids because they're going to learn from this. Right. That's yeah, huh. interesting. So you're saying little. I should not beat my kids? Yeah, unless you want them to beat their kids, then you should definitely do it. Right. I mean, it's only fair my parents beat the shit out of me. That's, so let's keep it going, baby. <laughs> supposed to eat Let that. The ties roll. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck am I talking about? <laughs> well, it's been a great show. Oh, it's over? Yeah, I believe it is. Ah, oh, fuck. See? But the good news is the party never stops at patreon.com slash Ellis, mate. Yeah. Can I drop a... Oh, you're definitely... Absolutely not. Everything. Give me cool. all your stuff. Make sure you follow me at Scuba Steve Fury. Scuba like you're diving. Steve, F-U-R-E-Y. I also have a show called Punching Up on Instagram where with me and my friend Saul Trujillo is a very fantastic comic where we watch people do street fights and we make fun of them. Mystery Theater, Science Theater, 3000. Comic. I want to watch that. That sounds... That's you can my do show. One. Watch it. It's pretty good. That is up my fucking... It's all street fights. It's, it's oh, good. Fuck yeah. Well, you have a, at least a nine and six record, so you're qualified yeah. to comedy. Yeah. yeah, you know, dabbled. No, but, you, 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 you wrecked a guy in front of little kids. <laughs> I wrecked you him. are a street fighter. Yeah, I wrecked him. He did. But he, he made, made up first He time. made like 20 little kids scream. <laughs> They'll never be the same. I started a new thing for them. <laughs> and then I got a podcast called This Week in Crime on the Comedy Store Podcast Network. Check that out. We look over a bunch of bad crimes that have happened, and we make fun of them. Cool. With cool. my buddy Sal Trio. So thank Through you. the Comedy Store. They have a little podcast network downstairs. Over that's smart. That was, yeah. that was good of them to do that. Yeah. Thanks for being on the show, dude. Thank you for both of you guys. This was great. Thank Let's you, Jason. See you hey, I've really enjoyed being your friend recently, man. Thanks for Yeah, back out. at you, man. Cool Seriously. Uh, we'll see, see you guys you. next week. Love each other. Don't die.